Hi everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this new motherboard from Gigabyte. This is the Gigabyte F2A85X-D3H. This is a standard ATX motherboard. It's based on the uh, FM2 socket and the FM2 socket is for AMD's FM2 series APUs or accelerated processing units uh, which is basically a CPU and a GPU in one. Uh, so you can get uh, the motherboard, you get that APU, and then pretty much you're all set. You don't need a graphics card. You do need memory, of course, uh, but you can run without the graphics card. You do have the option, of course, to add a discrete graphics card in the future, and uh, by way of AMD's dual graphics technology, you can actually pair certain graphics cards with your APU uh, in order to boost your graphics performance. Now, bear in mind, uh, you will need to double check the APU you're using, as well as a graphics card to make sure it supports dual graphics. Uh, but uh, that information should be available on the AMD website. Uh, this is also a UD series or ultra, dur ultra durable motherboard. Uh, F2 means the uh, FM2 socket. A85X is the chipset and that is the uh, highest end chipset that's currently available for the uh, FM2, FM2 socket and this series of APUs. Uh, the FM2 APUs, by the way, are codenamed Trinity, so double check. Make sure you're getting an APU that's uh, Trinity and that's also FM2 and you should be good to go. Uh, now this does actually feature triple monitor support right out of the box. They, it does have uh, multiple uh, display outputs if you're going to be using uh, an APU and going to be using the integrated graphics. Uh, you do have dual UEFI BIOS so you can use that to switch between a couple different BIOS settings or you can use it for uh, backup and recovery. Uh, it's also a 3D BIOS, so it gives you a graphical representation of the motherboard uh, when you go into the BIOS, and uh, you can use that to sort of determine what's what. You can also go into advanced mode if you are more old school and you want uh, that kind of uh, old school layout. Uh, it's Windows 8, Windows 8 ready, and uh, also by making use of the UEFI and uh, the Windows 8 features, you can get really fast boot times with this motherboard. Uh, as previously mentioned, A-Series support uh, the uh, A85X chipset, uh, it does su also support uh, dual graphics, Ifinity technology, uh, by virtue of the ultra durable construction you have all Japanese solid capacitors on the board, uh, humidity protection, electrostatic protection, power failure protection, and high temperature protection, as well as a glass fabric PCB construction. Well, let me flip around here to the back for some additional uh, information. A lot of this stuff is uh, stuff that was pointed out on the front of the box, but uh, has a bit more detail laid out here. For instance, here's a sort of quick look at the 3D BIOS, although bear in mind uh, the updated versions of the BIOS, uh, the layout's are slightly different than that. You also get a layout of the entire board there, pointing out to all the features. I'm going to be doing that in this video as well. Uh, finally, we have full product specifications down here in the lower left. Uh, you can check those out if you want, and I'm going to go ahead and proceed with an unboxing. Inside the box, first off, we have, uh, there's your case badge from Gigabyte, so you can put that on your case if you like displaying your case badges. You also have a driver and utility disk here. Uh, it's generally best to go over to the Gigabyte website to download the latest versions of your drivers, uh, but you can get important stuff off of here still, such as your LAN driver, because you can't access the internet until you install your LAN driver, generally speaking. Here's your motherboard manual, so this is going to be indispensable to keep on hand while you are doing your build. Uh, you have important info in here, like a layout of the motherboard itself. You also have a block diagram showing you what's connected to what. You also have detailed specs on all of the components that are part of the motherboard, and then it will uh, walk you through the basics of installation and everything. You can also check out our How to Build a Computer video if you want more information on that. You also get a multilingual installation guidebook, so if English is not your first language, that should help you out. And you also have an input-output shield here for the back of the motherboard. Uh, it's metal and uh, does have some imprints uh, on it, so you can sort of give you a better idea of what you're connecting to where and which plugs are which. You also have four serial ATA cables. They're all black. They all, I should say, two of them have straight plugs on both ends. Two of them have a straight plug on one end and a 90 degree angled plug on the other. They all have the little metal clasps to help hold them in place and they'll all be SATA revision 1, 2, and 3 compatible so these will work uh, for SSDs, for example, that connect via the SATA revision 3 bus. Next up is the motherboard. So here's a closer look at the motherboard. As you can see, um, flat black PCB in the back, uh, primarily black components as well as some gray highlights throughout in some of the dim slots here as well as the heat sinks uh, for the chipset as well as the power delivery components for the CPU. Let me point out the fan headers on the board. You get a total of four, one for the CPU, three for system fans. So system fan header number one up here in the upper right, 
number two, also up here in the upper right system fan header number three in the uh, mid left right here, and then right above it is your CPU fan header. Uh, so again, three system fans, one CPU fan. So, and uh, I'd say in, in most cases here, you should be able to connect uh, three fans to the motherboard and uh, control them via software, which is a pretty handy thing to do when you're building your system. Let me give you guys a quick look at the back here. Closer look at the PCB, of course, the nice uh, flat black color of that, of course. And uh, as far as the heat sinks on the board, they are held on with uh, plastic push pins. Flipping back to the front here, let's take a look at the motherboard in detail. We're going to start down here in the lower right. Uh, and actually, I'm going to start out with the serial ATA because uh, that's one thing I really like about the AMD chipsets that they've been coming out with, the A85X being the one featured right here. You get a total of eight serial ATA all revision 3, 6 gigabit per second ports. There's a couple more side-facing ones right there, as well as the front-facing ones right there. Um, these are all controlled by the same chipset, and they uh, can also all support RAID configurations. So you can do RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 10, as well as JBOD configurations right out of the box with this board. And again, uh, big credit to AMD for uh, giving us so much serial ATA Rev3 connectivity. Here's your motherboard front panel connectors. So they're color coded within that little box right there. You also get a little chart underneath that will tell you what's what. You can also reference the motherboard manual if you want to figure that out more clearly. Uh, you get a clear CMOS header right there so you can use a little jumper to uh, reset the board to factory settings. Uh, you also have your USB 2.0 connectors right there. Uh, so a couple of those available. Trusted platform module header right there. Uh, COM header right there. SPDIF connector for audio as well as your front panel audio connector so route your cable over there from the front panel of your case to enable your front panel microphone and headphone jacks. Uh, for audio on the board, since we're down in this area, you can see the uh, audio codec chip right there. It is a Realtek ALC892 audio chip and it, uh, that will support 2, 4, 5.1 or 7.1 channel audio configurations and you do have full support from that via the analog connectors on the I.O. on the back, which we'll be getting at towards the end of this little overview. Uh, we have one, two, three uh, PCI Express uh, X1 connectors right there. So those will be for your add-on devices. Uh, now, as mentioned, this board is geared for the uh, AMD APUs, which have a integrated processor. Uh, however, you do have the option to go with a discrete graphics card if you want. And if you do that, definitely connect it to this PCI Express X16 slot right here. It is physically X16 as well as wired up completely for X16. Uh, down here we also have a PCI Express slot and this is running at X4 as you can see wired up right there for X4. Finally we have a couple legacy PCI slots down there at the bottom so if you have an older PCI device you can plug it in right there. Here's your dual BIOS chips right there just to point them out. You have your main BIOS and your backup BIOS. And again, uh, you can do different settings on either one of those and switch back and forth. Or it gives you a little bit of peace of mind if you're updating your BIOS in the event of a power failure or something along those lines, uh, you will have a backup you can switch over to to recover. Uh, here is a Gigabyte logoed heatsink, and that's on top of your A85X chipset. Uh, once again, controlling a lot of the connectivity on the board, including your serial ATA ports, including all of your USB 3.0 on the board and speaking of which uh, moving up the side of the board right here we have a front panel 20 pin USB 3.0 connector so that's the internal header uh, for USB 3.0 so if your case has uh, that available you can connect it right there you can also get uh, add-on little, little drive bay adapters as well as rear panel, rear panel brackets uh, that will connect to that as well uh, so you do have the option to give yourself some more USB 3 here's your main motherboard 24 pin connector uh, above that you can see the uh, system fan header that I showed you guys at the beginning. And then next up we have our DDR3 slots right here. Now this is going to support dual channel DDR3. Uh, it will support uh, DIMM capacities. Actually according to Gigabyte, DIMM capacities up to 16 gigs per DIMM. Now, I personally haven't seen any of those available yet except for in server memory, but uh, once they do become more prevalent, they should be compatible with this board, and Gigabyte has promised to update their memory compatibility chart to let you know what is compatible with this particular motherboard. Uh, bear in mind also it's dual, dual channel support, so I recommend buying your memory in matched pairs and uh, make sure you install them in the color-coded slots to make sure you're going to be taking advantage of that dual channel capability and the added bandwidth and performance you get from that. 
To the left of that, we have our FM2 socket. So you'll notice here, there's a little gap in the middle of the socket. That's kind of one way to recognize that. And again, this is going to be compatible with your Trinity Series APUs that are FM2 compatible. Bear in mind, uh, as far as AMD APUs are concerned, there are FM1 uh, or Fusion Medium 1 uh, socket APUs available. Make sure you get the FM2, Fusion Medium 2 uh, APUs to make sure they're compatible with this motherboard. Get yourself up and running. Uh, now you can see some of the power delivery components around the socket over here and they have uh, put a little heat sink on that one to help keep that cool so if you are going to be doing any overclocking uh, keeping those components cooled off is pretty key and you should make sure you get a decent amount of airflow flowing over those as well particularly if you're going to be overclocking. Finally in the uh, upper left right here we have an 8 pin supplemental CPU power connector uh, so make sure you plug that in and connect it from your power supply. We'll finish off with our inputs and outputs over here. And let me remove some of the caps. Uh, now, I've mentioned a few times, but the APUs that uh, AMD has for this uh, motherboard do have integrated graphics, uh, different types of graphics, depending on which particular version of that APU you purchase, but you can get your display outs via these connectors right here. And again, you can actually uh, support three monitors uh, from uh, the integrated APU, which is a pretty cool feature. Um, right here you have a, a dual link DVI connector. You also have an analog D-sub connector, as well as HDMI. And uh, for the, uh, the dual link DVI, you can actually do resolutions up to 2560 by 1600. HDMI will support 1920 by 1200. Uh, a couple USB 2.0 ports over here, a couple more USB 2.0 ports right there, so four of those total that are on the I.O. on the back. Combo PS2 port right there for mouse or a keyboard. Uh, a couple more USB 3.0 ports right there, and again, those are also controlled by the A85X chipset, so they're going to be nice and fast. Uh, you also have integrated Realtek, Realtek Gigabit Ethernet via the RJ45 connector port right there. And then finally, you have your uh, audio connections. You have uh, optical uh, Toslink connector right there for optical audio out. You also have uh, your analog audio out connectors right there, as well as your microphone in. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the Gigabyte F2A85X-D3H motherboard featuring the uh, A85X chipset as well as the FM2 socket for AMD's Trinity APUs. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed today's video, you can find more on our Newegg YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.